Good evening, everyone. Tonight on episode seven of Expressions, the podcast, we are talking to a very special guest, Brandy Kenna. Brandy is a professional photographer, storyteller, and father living in beautiful Thunder Bay, Ontario, who specializes in capturing his clients' special moments in a unique and authentic way. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to episode seven of Expressions, the podcast with a special guest, Brandy Kenna. Uh, Brandy is a professional photographer living in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Um, but before we talk to Brandy, I just want to take a couple of seconds and talk to my co-hosts here. Uh, just go across the top. Uh, Ryan, how are you this evening? I'm doing great, man. I'm sorry that I missed you guys last week, but I'm happy to be back on the panel. I'm looking forward to getting to know you, Brandy, and hearing more about... I feel like you guys are just trying to pit me against photographers at this stage. I mean, now it's, <laughs> once again, it's four <laughs> photographers against me. <laughs> but uh, regardless, I'm looking forward to it tonight. Perfect. Excellent. And welcome. Uh, Brian, how are you this evening? I'm excellent. Thank you. Actually, I just came off two sessions today uh, teaching with private one-on-ones. So I've been sitting here at the computer pretty much the whole day <laughs> talking photography. And I, sorry, I, Ryan, I know uh, when it comes to photography, it's like you're hearing, you know, Charlie Brown's teacher talk at the front <laughs> of the room there. I can't necessarily understand all of it, but I get excited when we have a photographer on because it's like something that I'm totally into and can really get into some different kinds of conversations about. So Brandy, thank you very much for being here. Very nice to meet you and I'm looking forward to our talk. All right, perfect. And Aurora, how are you this evening? I'm doing great, I'm doing great. I'm excited for the podcast and I'm really excited to see some of Brandy's work because I've heard some good things, so yeah. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And then um, uh, Brandy, welcome to the show. Thank you for agreeing to come on. Um, uh, when you agreed, it was a, a grassroots show. We didn't even have our episode zero. Um, and you sort of went out on, on faith on a guy that you'd never met except for on Facebook. Um, but I appreciate you coming on. And how are you this evening, Brandy? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to chat about photography and everything else and get to know you guys and it's nice to put a face to mark even though i kind of know what he looks like but it's <laughs> it's nice it's all, it's all photoshop yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can't i can't photoshop myself here so it's uh it's excellent yeah he's starting to see the real you at this stage yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah and w one day he'll actually meet me and he'll be like oh my god this guy's huge uh, <laughs> Oh, all right. Excellent. Well, thank you very much again for being on, Brandy. Um, so, Brandy, your creative specialty is photography. Uh, and uh, for our, our listeners, Brandy runs uh, here in Thunder Bay, he runs uh, Encompass Photography. Um, and uh, that's, I believe, where you can find him on Facebook and on his website, which is, I believe, EncompassPhotography.com. Um, so uh, some very, very creative and unique uh, takes on uh, Thunder Bay surrounding area and as well with his, his clients. Um, so, Brandy, if you could um, just g give us a little, uh, a little, a little taste here. Who, who is Brandy? Like, uh, what got you into photography to start with? Uh, when I got into photography, I before doing photography full time, I worked at a school and I had the summers off. So for a few summers, I just ended up wasting my summers, kind of drinking beers and doing nothing, and just kind of letting life pass by and not really being a big fan of just, you know, doing nothing. So I thought, why not pick up photography? And I was like, oh, I'll just try it out. I told my wife, she's like, oh, all right, sure. We went to Best Buy and I walked in and I pointed at a camera and I said, that one. And literally <laughs> that was like the So spark. was there no, was there no other inspiration then? It was just, you were having a boring time and just thought, you know what, I want to just pick up a random hobby and you, you've landed on photography. My biggest thing was probably like I uh, put in, uh, I discussed with Mark and stuff like that. My biggest thing was trying to get over depression, pretty much just sitting there, just like I spent all summer just drinking beer and kind of just wasting my life away. Like no, nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that, but just for me as an active person and a creative person, I always had a drive for creativity through my life. So I think there's always been that smart spark, but uh, I, I think that was the biggest thing was just trying to get out of that, I guess, like, yeah, depressive us episode or whatever you could say. Yeah, I, and yeah. I think a lot of us have been there. You were, it sounds like you were just at a place in your life. You didn't know, you know, where you wanted to be, but you knew it wasn't there. 
Yeah. And so you want you wanted to move along. So that's that's great uh, that you used photography and, and the creativity. And um, we'll share some of your pictures in a little bit. But uh, certainly, uh, you know, creativity is uh, something that you're uh, you've got in spades for sure. Aurora and I have noticed. Um, we both work selling cameras, and we certainly noticed during the pandemic that people are really jumping into the passion head first. You know, um, they see this as the time that they should make the investment and get something substantial that they can grow with and do more with. So totally boredom is a great motivator for getting into photography because there's never an end to what you may learn. Sorry, my cat just jumped in front of me. <laughs> she wants me to daily, pat her. This is what she's doing. She's the daily me. dose of Dixie for all of us. So, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> daily dose of Dixie. There she goes. Sorry, guys. Perfect. Excellent. So other, other than uh, the boredom and wanting to do something uh, creative, um, what, do you have family or friends that influenced uh, you to become a photographer? Uh, no one really influenced me to become a photographer. None of my family was into photography. Uh, my mom was a pretty creative person in general since I was young. Uh, she, I helped work in flower shops, so I always made arrangements and helped do stuff like with you know, bouquets and weddings since literally I was like as young as I could remember, always helping create something. So I think that's So you had an eye for things that were aesthetically pleasing already. You yeah, were able I to chat so. yeah. Okay. That's very cool. It's a that's a unique side of art that I haven't even thought about. What what explain a little bit of what that was like, like working in that kind of creative art form. It was just fun because I, I like me and my mom are best friends, and that's what we connect through is creating and doing stuff. She helps me with my wedding show. She helps me with my signs, banners, everything. She'll, we create uh, sessions together where we'll transform whole, her whole backyard into like a Christmas session or something like that. That's so or, cool. Cool. So it's uh, pretty fun to have someone to bounce ideas around, especially in the creative realm. So mm -hmm. it's nice to have that. So when you set up, I've, I've noticed that you've done some like Christmas minis and things like that. Those are set, you set those up in your mom's backyard? Yep. Very cool yeah. to have that space to do that. So yeah, well done. Um, excellent. I'm kind of curious too, actually, because um, you mentioned that your family wasn't huge into photography you don't have really any family members that are photographers did you have anybody when you were first getting into it that really helped keep you motivated to be a photographer or that was like a mentor to you somebody that just kind of influenced you to, to stay in, into photography i'm a i found a few people like i when i first started i wanted to like you know when you first go on instagram and you look and you're like oh my god teal and orange or something like a color grade or learn about cinematic and this learn about Lightroom and Photoshop. I'm a very driven, independent, kind of stubborn human being where I was just like, I'm learning this no matter what. And I want to yeah. be like super good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come hell or high water, this is happening kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. no, that's it's awesome. Him. That's awesome. And I guess living out there too, it's a little bit harder to find somebody to connect to to get that information from. So you're pretty much forced to do this kind of thing on your own anyway. I find when I joined into photography, and this is one of the things I touched on with Mark, and he's also in a group that I created. When I started, I asked a few local photographers questions, and lots of them snubbed me, lots of them <sighs> didn't answer, lots of them were rude, lots of them were elitist, and it really put a bad taste in my mouth. And that was why one of the biggest things while doing photography, I really wanted to create a community, groups, adventures out together and it's not about anything other than just like we're all helping each other out because i had a pretty nasty like uh, experience at the start with some people that's horrible yeah yeah uh, uh, I, and i i definitely see that with uh with some uh, local community groups um, i joined a couple myself here and asked a few questions and never really got any answers as well so in, in not in photography but in a couple other a couple of their areas so i definitely hear you there being the new guy to the area even not knowing it was it was pretty tough um but uh it turns out i'm too busy to deal with any of that stuff anyway so it's, it's all good <laughs> yeah I, i've heard of a couple of uh, pretty rude photographers in my day here 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I think he was looking past you at me, uh, Brian. Dixie, is he talking about you? <laughs> yeah, for those who might be listening on Spotify, I motion to uh, my wonderful co host who I adore. <laughs> That's all in love. And he freezes right then. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Aurora, you were going to say something before. Yeah, um, well, from the same experience that uh, Brandy was kind of sharing, when I first started into photography, I was extremely young and I was a girl. And those two things for me, I experience a lot of people like oh you don't know what you're talking about especially when I first started working at Henry's um there was a lot of customers especially the older kind of photographers that you know have been doing it for a long time and you know they, they catch the slightest thing that you might say wrong or just don't believe that you know anything and then you know just completely write you off for your experience without even looking at, you know, your photos or whatever it may be, um, or just giving you the the time to kind of, uh, you know, talk about it and share your ex expertise and your experience with it. So. I've got a question it. actually for, for all of you guys and for Brandy, because Brandy, you mentioned you'd made this, this group that uh, you're trying to bring photographers together. So hearing Aurora's story there, have you guys found that the, the old mentality for, you know, your traditional photographer was that, you know, they were, it was almost an elitist mentality because, you know, you spent so much time, money and effort on your art that especially back then when there wasn't social media, there wasn't as much of a, exactly. There wasn't as much of an, no, I wouldn't say need for photography, but it certainly isn't where it's at now. So I feel like Brandy, you've tried to, based on your early experiences, have tried to really change the mindset of what most photographers could have. And again, I could be completely wrong. I only know you guys, and you guys are clearly not at all the uh, the elitist mentality that you experienced early on. But do you find that used to be the case with a lot of people, and you're trying to shift that mentality? I have created several groups ranging from different sizes, from ranging from beginner to advanced to and everything in between. I think mm -hmm. lots of it stems from people become kind of stuck in their ways or maybe is fear. Like they don't want to get left behind. It's just, I think it's just easier to just be like, you know, the old curmudgeon kind of way. Like this is the only way to do it. Film. It has to be like Kodak 400 and it has to be shoot on this. And like, and then I come up there and I'm like, well, I, I like shooting on my Sony a seven three, you know, it can shoot at like, 100,000 ISO and make clear photos they're like that's trash <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. when I was a boy I'd have to walk to school on my knees yeah. mm -hmm. so it's almost like any like any sort of um, career it's you you have your traditionalists who who <coughs> want to stick to the way things always should be same as wrestling you've got people that want things to yes. to yeah. stay the way they were and used to be and you've got people who are now like hey I have nothing against the old way of doing things and the old way of shooting, but I also think that you can do it with these newer piece of technology and there's different ways to capture a shot. Yes, Brian. Also like wrestling, a lot of photographers think the younger photographers need to pay their dues and you need, you, you can't possibly know as much as I do. I've been doing this for 40 years. You don't know what you're talking about. I used to shoot with film and I used to go into a dark room and develop and dodge and burn. You don't know what you're talking about. You it's not that case. It's not like that. I mean, there's different schools. As Mark knows and Aurora knows, I started the New Market Camera Club here in New Market, and I did that with my buddy Ross. I had a TV show on Rogers. I mean, yeah, I've done the things that the people that should be elitist have done. I had to leave the camera club because of the ego. I had to leave it because of the, um, the negative vibes that I felt going there every time. It just felt like just very negative vibes. We as a camera club had to give a, a review and we gave a review and people were having fun, having talks about it. And this one person was offended that people were laughing. I mean, come on offended because people are enjoying your image. That to me is when I basically said, I'm done. I can't handle the general attitude of a lot of um, older. And it was an older situation, older photographer situation where my attitude with starting day tripper photo and the same thing that you did, Brandy, you start these communities of people with uh, the similar passion who love to share information. And we had a great community on Google plus, but then that closed. So I tried to move over to me, we, which is still the same great community, but a lot less active 
a lot less uh, people that knew about it. So my question out of this little rant that I just had is where do you do your communities? How, what platform are you using and how are you attracting the people to get into this safe space, so to speak? Uh, I, that's where I did most of my learning. And I think that's where I did grew so fast as a photographer because I joined Facebook groups and uh, I made a bunch of friends all across the world and uh, still friends with lots of them and still really close with them. And uh, I like the Facebook groups because you, then you can add them as a friend and create group chats and then you can create all that and you, then you can make even groups where it's more maybe focused on landscape, this, portraits and everything. So I've created everything from general photography, portraits, landscape, and local groups like Capturing the Bay and all these stuff. So I've been doing it since day one. I've been just hooked on creating communities. It's fun, it's exciting. I love seeing other people just like join in. It's, it's It lights like that spark, I love it. I love that. That's awesome. And communities yeah. is the right word. And, and communities is a word I've always kind of hinged on as well because it does take a community to give people proper feedback and proper growth. And you know, growth from one person at the top trying to tell you how to do everything is never going to be proper even growth it's always going to be growth from one perspective getting growth from multiple people the same reason why i asked these amazing people here to be on my show and with aurora and ryan and, and mark we've got such a diverse way of looking at things that any conversation isn't coming from just one person's view, a photographer's viewpoint. We have a non-photographer and we have a musician and we have like a lot of different artists, different kind of um, diverse personalities. And this is what you get when you form a community. You build up lots of these personalities and you encourage everybody to be better than, well, I try to make everybody better than who I am um, because that means I'm hanging out with really cool people. Right? Real quick, so, I'm gonna put that on my business card, non-photographer. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ryan. Hey, I'm the minute you want to call yourself I'm a kidding. photographer, you got all the help you need right here, man. <laughs> sorry, my my business card says professional scapegoat, so you're good. <laughs> Perfect. I don't have uh, anything Ryan, on a business card anymore. Ryan, I've queued up um, a screen share. Can you share it for everyone? So yeah, I, can show some I definitely stuff. can do that. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So Brandy, I've got uh, a folder of a lot of your images. This, this one, wow. I, I love it for two reasons. Um, first off, um, obviously the, the, um, the lady in the red dress is just amazing. Uh, and, and the whole scene unfolding with the paper mill in the background. And, and the second reason I, I love it is because you can actually see my house um, in this picture. Oh, it's, it's, oh it's, wow. It's, it's right where this snowflake is. That's where I live. Right <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm curious, is there any editing done to this photo in terms of filters or anything that way? Or is this just like what you were able to capture with your camera? This Before is... we go there, can we just explain what we're seeing here for the people that are only listening to this on the audio podcast? Maybe, Brandy, you can explain this from your perspective when you made it. Absolutely. Uh, this photo is taken on top of our – it's a local mountain. Uh, it's pretty high up, and I perched them on, I guess you could say, the edge of a cliff. <laughs> it's pretty sketchy. <laughs> and uh, behind them is – not the most exciting background. I wasn't happy with the mill. And one of the funny things is someone asked, uh, gave me CC, like constructive criticism. They're like, oh, maybe you should move more to the right. I'm like, I would die. So there's always that limitation. Them. But yes. Uh, and then, of course, there's a nice scenic background and all that. And uh, uh, when the female clients has a red dress and the gentleman has like dress pants and suit, it's very classy in a very adventurous way. As and a man afraid of heights, I don't think he did enough justification explaining how sketchy this looks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially with the wind effect and the snow coming yeah. down. They're like right on the edge of this cliff. It's not just oh, yeah. they're hanging around a cliff. There's like there's a 80 foot drop right next to them. It'll have a further than uh, 300 feet. Yeah. Okay, 300 yeah. foot drop. That's yeah. a death drop right there. I don't like However, beautiful shot worth the 300 foot risk. I mean, it was clearly worth the 300 <laughs> foot risk. But. And, and there, so for the for the viewers at home, they're not right on the edge. They've got a good 
two feet to the Oh, yeah. Edge. No, they're, they're back. <laughs> they're, they're, they're I'm going to get it. Somebody afraid of heights, there's no way he'd ever get me to model for that shot. It, there is no way. Yeah. <laughs> well, the slightly to to, scary part sorry. of it to uh, for me is the fact that it's snowy. So, yes. like, was she wearing, mm-hmm. like, heels or something like that? Um, or were they wearing, like, you know, proper footwear? <laughs> so when I do support straps. photos, I get clients. We walked up, well, we climbed up this mountain, and it was a snowstorm. The wind was probably going around 40 to 60 kilometers an hour when we were Whoa. up there. And to be honest with you, the snow is fake. The sky is fake. Okay. I- gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So you added that in post. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's but what it's... I was going to ask next. What What's the what's what's your philosophy for the editing? Mine is I am not a what is it a purist in any way, as you'll see probably in some of my other photos. I'll explain it. But this one, I the sky was ugly, so I replaced it, and then I added the snow, and I added a little uh, kind of you can kind of do like almost a wind effect kind of with like like a motion blur and all that but everything else is just simple color grades you know global adjustments nothing too crazy on this one very cool yeah it's, it's just a it's an amazing shot and this one the first time i saw it when you first posted it i thought wow um i i i, I classify uh pictures in two ways one is i like the picture and the second one is i look at it and say i wish i took that picture and this <laughs> is definitely a, i wish this was my picture i wish that i i had this so that's it's awesome. It's one of my favorites. And then, uh, so we've got this one here. Now, this one doesn't look like there's too much uh, uh, crazy. So this one is a, a mother and a child on a, on a, a path. Um, can you explain a little bit about this one for us, Brandy? Uh, this one, yeah, you, you are correct. Uh, most of my editing, this is uh, tuned to more what I uh, try to achieve with lots of my sessions, lots of warm tones. Really, I always try to get clients to be natural i don't do much tons of posing like i just told her to walk down the path and spin in circles and literally that's i just snap away and like on this one i love doing environmental portraits the path has a nice lead line the warmth coming in lights them up it's just all around i i personally think a nice lovely image Beautiful. Yeah, it's a perfect time of day. Uh, you shot this at it. I guess it's a, around like golden hour, right before sunset, or yeah. uh, right before sunrise. I'm guessing ninety nine percent of my work is pretty much golden hour. <laughs> You'll yeah. see. Yeah, that is such a trick that photographers don't remember. It's all about the light. Yeah, time of day, directionality, having the sun coming in the direction that it is. It almost looks like the beams are shining straight at her. Yep, and. Yeah. The way a photographer's mind works is, light. yeah, you're always drawn to that contrast and the, the light drawing you to a certain area. So the first thing you're going to see is the brightest thing in the photo, which was the sun on the left. And then, of course, that just draws you right to your model, which was a great choice. And the vignette that you put at the top made it darker, which draws you back down. Good job, man. Nice shot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. And, and this next one I'll share here. Um, this one, uh, Brandy, if you could explain this one to, to everyone, because I just, I love this shot. I love it. Yeah, this is uh, one of my current favorite wedding ones that is, everybody seems to really, really enjoy and is getting me several, several weddings. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this was freezing cold out. It was god awful windy and we were standing out at a golf course and this was the last shot. Everybody left, all the uh, everybody, and it was just them two. And I was like, "Okay, we're gonna do the final shot." I'm like, "You do whatever you want," and he just picks her up, lifts, and it's like perfect movie moment. And then I'm like, "Throw your arm out!" And I'm just screaming at them, yelling at them, and <laughs> I snap the photo. And this one, honestly, is just a nice warm temperature, global adjustments with shadows and all that stuff, and this is my signature like so i create the sun ray like the i guess you could call like semicircle and all that okay so that flare you've added after uh the flare around the tree line is a real but the flare around them is in post cool what do you use for that 
Uh, I use a different, well, if I do naturally, I use a copper pipes, I've used crystals. You can get pretty creative with lots of metallic things. This one is uh, overlay combined with a little bit of, like a little bit from, I have like my own folder of stuff I created with my own copper pipes and stuff like that. So it's a bit of like- Love it. <laughs> a mishmash of that, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, when I first started shooting, one of the tips of advice I got was take lots of photos of textures and patterns, and you can use all that kind of stuff as overlay later. So you have yep. all these flares that you've recorded. It's like sampling for a DJ, right? You're, yep. You've got all your little samples that you can just bring in when you need it. It's funny, though. Um, this lens that I have, it's my old 2485. It's got a little chip in it. And uh, if I just get it just right, I can get that lens flare to give me not this look, but I can create a lens flare on purpose with just how I angle this with a flash coming in. So mm -hmm. as soon as I saw this, I thought that is so cool that you're able to purposely choose where you want it to be. And, and the fact that you're able to really control it with the layer, I think that's very cool. Very, very cool. And a lot more dependable yeah. than hoping that you'll get the light in the right place with the lens that's chipped. That's and broken. the one thing that I've tried to do and took me so long because lots of people think shooting into the sun is really easy. It's extremely difficult if you knowing as a photographer, because if I, that's like, I would love because for anybody to try is noticing how hard it is to focus, how hard it is to see, how hard it is to actually make sure that you're not blown out, but not too dark, not underexposed and all that things and balancing all that is while dealing with clients or wedding or this or kids is sometimes really fun and challenging. Yeah, for sure. That's the thing. The thing I really love about this photo is um, how you've, you you said you've got the sun behind the bride and the groom. Yet they are they're 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 not super bright, but they're exposed enough. You can tell who it is. Um, you know, it's got that that emotion in it. It's got the you know uh, the, the lens flare. I love the lens flare. And I think you and I had, had a conversation about the flare on one of your other photos, and I thought it was natural. And I was like, what did you use to get that? And you told me it was in post. I'm like, well done, because normally I can pick out what was done in post, and this was really, really cool. Um, but uh, just uh, the last thing I want to say about this one is I hope this bride and groom has this really, really large on their wall. <laughs> I, hope they have I don't know one. if they have this one. They have their engagement photos. I don't know if I sent it. It's literally them at this, like, 60 70 foot waterfall in winter and it's literally a winter wonderland and it's like oh, wow. yeah wow but again wow. what is it with you and pick, putting people next to giant tall mountains <laughs> in so, the middle of the winter nonetheless <laughs> my business model is to only create like lot, there's lots of amazing talent locally mm -hmm. but there's i want to be someone that offers something that you don't see I want to be someone that will take you to crazy places and crazy things and offer you something that's completely otherworldly that you've never seen because there's lots of great talent, but I want to be me and that's who I am. I'm crazy. <laughs> that's what sets you apart. I like that. I like that, my friend. That's awesome. It's Absolutely. the creativity though that sets anybody apart and everybody's got yep. their own level of creativity, but when you can put, were you using a crystal for this one? Uh, yes, I used a crystal and then there's overlay in the top left and I used so that crystal creates the rainbow Yeah, but the crystal was also if you get it wet it can create that rainbow effect because this was thunderstorm and raining torrential downpouring and So then I take the rainbow and I bring it into Photoshop and then I stretch it and then it creates a motion effect and I just like doing just like does it make sense? Nope. But I thought it was pretty. <laughs> but it gives it a really nice ethereal feel. You know, it's almost like yep. um, like a Wizard of Oz kind of moment. You know, it's just that mm -hmm. bit of a craziness with pop of color. Really it, interesting. The way that it's used in this photo, it, you just keep looking around the photo. You can't stop looking at it because of the it, the way that the of the curve of the the rainbow like the, into the sky and then back down again. Um, it does like it's, a. And the you arm get busy looking too. at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It almost looks like there's rain coming down in the background. Yeah. So for, for somebody that's not a photographer, I hear you guys mentioning crystal. What what is that when you're saying that you're you're using a crystal to shoot this? Is that the type of lens or is that are you so physically have, have a crystal one. that you're <laughs> reflecting light off of? Oh or yes. I'm getting creative exactly. here. I'm getting real creative. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So using crystals. So the, the one the one thing that uh, the stream is what, lit up really nice now. I like that. <laughs> There's light what, shining everywhere. What really draws me to Brandy's uh, photography is when I when I see his work. Um, one of the things that I, I learned early on as a photographer when that, when my wife and I were shooting weddings is that you know we needed to make sure we were bringing pictures images to the bride and groom that you know their uncle Bob wasn't going to get on his iPhone. Uh, and Brandy, you absolutely you nail this uh, with your work, and and it is so different, uh, and it really sets your work apart from other photographers. Um, and uh, and your 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 style is such where I'm starting to see it. Like if when I see it come up in the feeds on your on your group, and you're capturing the Bay group, I can tell it's your work even before I notice it was you that posted it because you've got a a style. That's the best compliment I could hear. <laughs> Perfect. So we'll just share a couple more, um, and then we'll uh, get on to Ooh, this favorite. one here. Yeah, uh, I love this one as well, and 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 actually, uh, you know, we we because we're we're not completely a PG. Um, you can see the file name in the top left hand corner of this. Thing. <laughs> I can't on my phone, so it's it's a little I can't make it out. But yeah. I'll trust you that it's vulgar. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. Sometimes so I, I get very mad at Photoshop. Yeah, I, <laughs> no, this was a good one. Fuck, I love yeah. my job. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's that is awesome. awesome. And there are actually there are actually quite a few photos in in the folder that Brandy sent me that are fuck I love my job or <laughs> yeah. I really do. I, yeah, I will say even looking at this photo real quick, I feel like I want to write a novel just based off seeing this photo. I'm like that is a novel cover right there. That looks yeah. so awesome. Yeah. yeah, it looks natural though, weird. which is it's like obviously yeah. it's not something that you can create naturally, but you created it. It's very natural looking. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. is this like the copper pipe type technique you're talking about? This was shot in a soccer field. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool. I wow. literally, in the top right, I photoshopped a goalpost. To the left, there was a huge building. Uh, <laughs> I, it's crazy, the amount of stuff. But the sky was real. The flare on the sun, the ring, of course, is fake. But I love their posing that I created with this. It's so spicy. It's just, I love it. Aurora, this spicy. reminds me... This reminds me of something from The Circle. Yeah. <laughs> the TV show The Circle, where they have like little circles all over the place, like pew, little glowing circle yeah. around the moment. I've um, got to, <laughs> awesome. I've got uh, Brian on a circle uh, show kick. I'm so, I was wondering I'm what was happening Brazil. there. Like, I feel like we're all not in on a joke or something. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I squirrel very easily. Yeah. <laughs> nice, another oh, nice, great nice. shot. You've got yeah, that real ethereal wonderful. feel to your shots, though. It's very airy. It's very... Yeah. Um, spiritual feeling almost. Yeah. Yeah, very good. And this this one, am I correct that there's um, little to no uh, after effects in this? This is mostly all in camera. Yeah, this is all. That one's yeah. OG. Just yeah, perfect. So what what are there like rain in the air here, or is that? Yeah, it's just like it's like because it's like it was a combination of mosquitoes and like rain, and it's like little. And it's just like those highlights and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. That backlight is just gold, man. Yeah. yeah. yeah you've got a great you use of backlight. Light. So many photos. Um, so um, I think we could probably stop the screen share now, Ryan, if you want. Um, Brandy, do you have – we talked earlier about uh, things that uh, that influenced you and whatnot. And you had mentioned that you went through – like you were going through photographers on Instagram and whatnot and looking at different styles and tone mapping and things like that. Was there any photographers that, um, like, that really – caused you to go down this path or was this something that you you were looking at other people's work and went wait a minute let me get creative this way um and and like with adding that the lens flare afterwards and after effect was that something that you you were able you saw that anywhere or is that uh that like a brandy kind of original um for you when i first started i didn't even want to shoot people i wanted to be a landscape photographer and my biggest passion was nick page he's a great landscape photographer and i wanted to do landscape had no interest and then then and then i was shooting my wife all the time and she got annoyed with it and she's like go do something else <laughs> so as time went on i was shooting lots of instagram models and at first i was a moody photographer cinematic like very dark lots of blues and i just realized i was following a trend 
And then I went to another trend and another trend. As my business started, I noticed that I wasn't getting any bookings and I felt like I was just trying to do what everybody else was doing or trying to just, you know, not really stand out. I was just a photographer. And then I just like kept challenging myself. I'm like, if I want to make this a business and really succeed at this, I got to do something that stands out. And I just started playing with it. And then just people started loving it. And then I saw a few other people in other groups. I, like, I don't know names or photographers that would, I'm like, oh, I love that. And like, you know, take that inspiration and just run wild with it. Like, oh, they'd have a flare, but I take the flare and add a ring because I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Very cool. Now, would you call that digital art? Like, uh, there's that, that I mean, is, there's the, is it photography? Is it digital art? I mean, this is totally photography. Because you got to have the composition, you got to have using the light, you've got to have the proper exposure in camera. Technically, you have to know what you're doing with with the images you create. But the purists out there oh, yes. would probably call it more digital art because yeah. there's that whole element of digital manipulation, photo editing, and stuff, right? I've been uh, I've been critique from both ends of the spectrum. Where most I've heard like. Well, you know, like I said, it's like everybody's like, well, it's not hard. You just shoot in the sun, like, oh, big deal. Or it's like, <laughs> it's like I've heard everything from I love it to I loathe it. So, mm. I mean, at the end of the day, it drives me and lights my fire. And that's, I noticed the change when I was going out with clients and creating the things I wanted to do. I was happy and they loved it. What's my life motto? And, What's my life motto? You. I shoot, shoot for, me. for you. That's yep. it. Um, I, I think too, like when, when Brian asked, like, is it, do you consider it digital art at a point? And correct me if I'm wrong, you would just consider it art to you. It's, it's your yeah. passion. It's your art. There's no, like, you're going to incorporate whatever tools you can to create the art that you want, that you've envisioned. So um, I really, really enjoyed just seeing those pieces, man. Those are, those are really, really, it's, it's nice to see somebody who, again, isn't a purist as well, who's able to incorporate all these different, not to say that you guys don't, obviously. See, now I'm going to paint myself on a weird box. Not there's no wrong way really, to make art. There's just no I, wrong I, way to make art. Of course. And I, I enjoy like the, the non purist mentality. If I can bring in Photoshop, I can take out buildings that are in the background and add these flares um, from my own from Photoshop. And that to me is it really adds another element to your photography. I really enjoy but, seeing those photos. Oh, but but it has to work. It mm -hmm. has to look natural. Yeah. It has to look ethereal. It has to look different. It can't look like somebody took. Uh, thing and just pasted it on there because then everybody be. It can't look like I got into Photoshop with his picture. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of photographers who rely on these tools to make their photos better. What I'm right. not, what I'm seeing here is not that. What I'm seeing is quality photo. That's the extra ten percent is added that makes yeah. it a hundred percent better. Well, right? even his first photo when it tricked me. His first photo, my, and that's why I give you credit, Brian, for not letting him answer my question of, did you like filter anything here? Did you add anything? Because seeing how he went from, this is what we took for the initial shot. This is the, the small layers that I added in afterwards. I thought, okay, that's incredible. It's incredible just to see how you get one shot and then what the finished product would look like. So with very minimal added effect, I think as well. And like you yeah. said, Brian, a very natural effect. Yeah. One of my favorite photographers, Ansel Adams, uh, he coined the, the expression to pre-visualize, to think before you shoot. Um, yeah. Brandy, how much of your photos are in your mind before you squeeze the shutter? Compared to, is it the kind of thing where you think about it and then make the photo? Or are you looking through your images and think, well, this one should really get this treatment? Or is it a, a both? I know when working with clients, if I'm in the field and I know exactly you'll be taking photos, especially the shooting mirrorless, like I'm taking quite a bit, not spray and pray, but, you know, quite a bit, especially capture, you know, and you'll just, for me, I just know I'll, I'll be taking 200 photos in a row and I'll just know it's that one because it's instinctually, you know, the flares there, you know, this, that feeling, that subtle emotion, that little flare of, you know, him pushing her hair back, this something that will catch you. And you're just like, that is it. So I, I kind of just let the moment flow and my mindset just knows from experience, I guess, doing this 
a lot that that is the one. Yeah, I know what you mean. Totally know what you mean. Yeah, same cool. here. Yep. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. So, so Brandy, as we said, uh, you you run Encompass Photography, and obviously, uh, at the start of the show, uh, before the show, when we were in the green room, we were talking about how difficult it's been for me moving to Thunder Bay and not knowing anybody with COVID hitting. Um, and you and I know each other only in a virtual world. Um, now, you you run a business, and that's your your main your main uh, income is is through photography. How has the last uh, year affected you? This has been the toughest thing I've probably ever dealt with because before doing this, I made the jump, which was the scariest jump of pretty much quitting my full time job and going into photography full time. And it was terrifying. And it went so great. I had such a good summer with weddings and crazy fall busiest. And I, I, it gave me the opportunity to be like, I can do this. I, I, you know, income and all this, everything was blown up. It was awesome. And, and sorry, just sort of cut you off, but timeline wise, what year are we in when this is all happening? When you're first like uh, launching your business and Technically, I've I've been doing it three years. I've this is my first year full time. So like okay. halfway through the first year, and then COVID hit, and it just pretty much has destroyed it. I'm just watching my business burn. Like wedding clients are moving all their dates to 2022, and it's just honestly depressing. <laughs> So, yeah. so if anybody, if anybody's watching this or listening to this, and they're in the Thunder Bay area and they're looking for a wedding photographer for this year for a small intimate wedding, they can give you a, they can contact you through your website. Yeah, they can contact me through uh, my website, Facebook. Right now, it's so up in the air because I was allowed to shoot, and now I'm not again allowed to shoot because the stay-at-home order, and they keep switching it all the time. Mm -hmm. So I had a bunch of things booked and now I have to move it. And now other weddings are possibly being moved. So it's just more income loss. And it's just, it's just literally watching it bleed. That must be hard. I have a, quite a few friends that um, had to cancel their weddings or move their weddings or change around their bookings. I have actually one friend who the photographer has refused to move their booking, um, even though they may not even have their wedding. So <laughs> it's, sad. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a, a sad kind of experience. Um, so I, I totally get where you're coming from. I personally, I'm not planning a wedding myself, but uh, being in the bridal party and, 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 you know, hearing my closest friends uh, going through these struggles right now um, for their own personal wedding, I can only imagine. I've always thought, oh, man, what are the photographers doing? What are the video videographers doing right now? Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, and not to, to go down any sort of a political path, but with you being a business owner, have you been able to find any sort of resources to help you in any way during this time, either through the government or through any sort of aid services? Is there been anything for a photographer or somebody who owns their own business in photography? I literally uh, just wrote a question like that down because I'm very curious about this. <laughs> yeah. I, I personally didn't look into it. Thankfully, as a photographer, I technically work for such a short amount of time and make all my income in wedding season or fall. And then mm -hmm. pretty much I just sit and wait on my nest egg. So right now, thankfully when, how everything lined up, it kind of lined up perfectly, but I mean, how far can this nest egg last me with COVID? Right. So we're at that point now where it's it's starting to be like you've been yeah. able to coast for that like December lockdown that we had. But now that the nice weather's here, this is your your busy period that would be picking up. I see yeah, what you're like, saying. Yeah, I would just start getting bookings around now, which people are interested. And it's it's I'm just sitting here saying, sorry, I can't. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so there's so, so many new challenges. It's not just the business loss of business, but it's also the new way of making bookings and the new way of planning ahead and the new way of dealing through all these obstacles that we have to deal with. Um, it's ridiculous. And it's a big, huge change every day. It seems, you know, every, every other day, it's like this whole new 
operating system that we have to download and work with. It's crazy. Yes. So I, uh, I have a question because I know that there's a lot of people out there who are taking this opportunity to kind of uh, reach out into maybe like different kind of avenues. I know hairdressers, some of them are like mixing their own hair dye to give to their clients to deliver in different places. Tattoo artists are breaching out into like artists and making color books, uh, coloring books and, and that kind of thing. There's so much expansion that can be done. Have you thought about doing anything like that? Like small stock little- photography. So like I've that. looked into things and I've tried several things over the years. Uh, I sell prints on the side. I sell canvases. Um, and what else? Like I've also right now doing puzzles. The thing with that, it's nice, but as I explain to people, lots of people are like, oh, why don't you do prints? And I explain to them, I'm like, okay, so let's, for example, you do eight by 11 and you sell for $20, you sell 14 of them. They're not going to buy another one. So it's kind of just this like little, little bump. And then it's just, okay. it's not it's, sustainable. It's extra income, if anything, but it's not exactly. sustainable. Yeah. And, I get when, that. and I explain to people, I'm like, it's very helpful by the same time when a mortgage and car bills, like I'm still trying, but it's also a hard market. It's saturated. There's a mm-hmm. lot of people. It's a lot of things because a lot of people want a canvas until they're like, Oh, I want a big canvas. And I'm like, yeah, that's going to be a thousand dollars. They're like, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People have big dreams, but then they hear the actual cost that goes into it. The amount that yes. it'll not just cost, but work as well. And yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I, as a as a photographer uh, before my my current role at work, I, I had time to actually shoot for clients, um, and I never actually sold. I never sold. I've never sold a single print, not one, um, because I always sold them their images. I did the I did the work for them. I did all the processing for them. They got all their images, and then they printed them themselves. I didn't. I didn't want to be in the business of of selling prints <coughs> uh, for that reason. And I've never I've never done that. Any anybody that's got my work on their walls is either because they paid for my service or I gave it to them as a gift or uh, or they wanted in a, a charity auction or something. Um, that's where all my work has come from. So I definitely get where you're coming from. They, they're going to buy one picture, maybe two or three, if they really like your work, and put them on the walls. So, um, Ryan, you want to screen share again? We'll show a couple of Brandy's uh, landscape shots. Um, yep. I hope you don't mind, Brandy. I'm snooping on your Facebook page. Well, <laughs> man, so that's, that's all I've been posting so far because yeah. I can't shoot people. <laughs> yeah, so these these images here, and this is a, a waterfall. What waterfall is this? It must be in the area. This is uh, up by Nipigan. It's a 110-foot waterfall. Mm. yeah beautiful and I, uh, I, yeah my favorite yeah so it's a really cool and i love the obviously the long exposure of the water and then you've also got the long exposure affected the clouds are moving so that gave it a really neat effect um mm-hmm. and then uh, this is the church in nipigan correct yes yeah okay I've, I've i've seen it as it flashes by on my way to uh, timmins so um definitely a, a really neat effect with uh with the long exposure and the and the clouds going by was this shot at night? Nope, daytime, broad daylight with a ND ten, and that's, that's a, what I was going to say. A thirty second exposure, I think. Yeah. Cool. I was like, I wasn't going to say ND ten, but I wasn't far off. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> yeah. what what he just said is, um, you know, welder's glass, Ryan. When you take the welder's lid and you put the welder's mask down, and you have that really dark glass that you'd have to see through when you're welding. Yep. Basically, it's super super dark glass that you can put in front of a lens to let your Exposure lasts a longer period of time. Let more light in without your picture getting too bright. So it's like putting on dark, dark glasses on a camera so that you can make a longer shutter speed to get these clouds moving like like they are here. Right. Okay. Very cool. To get the motion. And then there's another waterfall. Man, you gotta know. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta get good over here. Which which waterfall is this one, Brandy? Wolf Falls. Wolf Falls. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And I'll I'll share another couple. I love that. Yeah, so water waterfall with the the light in behind it as well, uh, late in the day. Um, some flowers, some some lovely bokeh effect in the background. Mm. Uh, Juicy sucker for bokeh. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, very very nice. Now, what what um, you know? You said you shoot, you shoot so, Sony mirrorless. Uh, do you have a, a variety of lenses that you use, or do you have a couple of go tos? I shoot with two Sony A seven threes. Um, I mostly for portrait work is thirty five mil is my favorite. Uh, really? For love 35. Um, hmm. I love creating the environmental portraits. 35 has the cinematic kind of yeah. look. 
I also, uh, I mean, for lenses, I have 17 to 28, 35 mil, 85 mil, 70 to 180. And of course I have my drone. And uh, so it covers the whole spectrum, but most time for paid work is 35, 85 for weddings and um, portraits. And for fun stuff, it's just whatever, you know, yeah. whatever I'm feeling. Perfect. When I was so, actually snooping here, I noticed a drone photo. I'll go back and find it here. Do you get a lot of drone work? Uh, no, drone work is, uh, there we go. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. There's a I, little, lo I love this. Yeah. There's my mom's boyfriend on the dock laying down. You oh. can see him. <laughs> oh, yeah. There is a Oh, I see. Yeah. Right in the center. Yeah. The bottom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Sorry, Ryan, you're going to ask something? Oh, I'm just, I'm curious because I hear I've always heard with photography about you know the different mill or ML lenses and things like that. What does that mean? Does that just adjust or affect the the background shots? What you like? I'm just I'm so curious what these different so, numbers and lenses affect. It depends. For example, like a 17 mil is wide, but it also depends what aperture. So you could get an aperture to, so. We could sit here for an hour talking. I was gonna say, so I'm, I'm just trying to get a free photography class, guys. That's all this is. So for millimeter, anywhere from 17 is wide. 200 is, of course, zooming in. Aperture means that you can create, let's say, let in more light or create more bokeh with. If you get closer with distance, kind of just super simplifying really quickly. And right. I'm so sure and you've been able to find a way. You've been able to find a way then to to know what like if you're doing a wedding for example like i want to use this aperture setting with this uh, cool. or mill yeah okay um, can i can i ask that uh mark goes back to the screen share oh, sure. and shows the flower with the shallow depth of field um and then and then we can talk a little bit like just a quick explanation about photography so that maybe the people watching the video can understand. So this, um, yeah. is this the one? Uh, the pink flowers. Oh, the pink with the bokeh? Yeah. Love this. Yeah. There you go. So you have the really shallow depth of field, which is a wider aperture opening. So like a, a 2.8 or a 1.4. Um, and that's how you get like the clear flower, but it's really blurred out past the, you know, the first one there. Um, and then Mark, if you could go to the, um, the picture of the waterfall where you can see the sun starburst. Yeah, so this here is a a, shall, a a smaller aperture opening, so like an f22 or something like that. Um, okay. And you see how it's clear from front to back, like the clouds are clear. The the I don't know, is that like grass or rocks or whatever uh, in I the think front? It was rocks. Yeah. Yeah. So in the back, where you're seeing the sun starburst there, because you're using such a uh, a closed, a closed in aperture, um, the sun is actually creating this starburst effect through that. Um, okay. So you can actually, by forcing it like that and having the light in the right place, you can actually get that starburst effect there. Photography is awesome. The way you do things is just so cool. Uh, Ryan, you asked about focal length. The number basically represents your field of view. So yeah. the smaller the number, the wider your field of view. The bigger the number, mm. the less field of view you have. So it would make things look closer. Like this lens I'm holding up here, that's a 500 millimeter really far. The mm -hmm. farther I zoom in, the more narrow the field of view gets. So things look closer to you. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the focal length answer. The that's, aperture okay. answer is like the pupil of your eye, right? When the aperture yep. is more open, it lets in more light. When the aperture is more closed, it lets in less light. But it also Ooh, gives okay. the effect that Aurora is talking about with that starburst effect. So when that aperture is really, really small, the light forces its way through there and just kind of goes and gives you that really cool starburst. Yeah. If my if my high school photography teacher is watching this by chance, I'm sorry. I tried to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, I swear I was listening to you, but <laughs> yeah. no, but that's, that's really interesting. Asking. That's excellent. But, but the thing with Brandy's work is is that I, what I noticed right away when I started seeing it on on Facebook is that he's he's a he's got a really great eye he's got a really great eye for comp composition um, which is something that i need to continue to learn uh, myself um, but he's also a very technical shooter and he's got a great uh, post-processing game as well so so it really makes really makes for a well-rounded photographer to be able to pull off not only a great portrait with some great effects for his clients but also an amazing landscape that somebody would want to have on their wall so uh, so just well done well done all well around done. question thank for you, you thank you um, a big part of our show is how people deal with 
struggle and how they deal with the mental health through their creativity. Now, we talked about how you got into photography because you were depressed and not doing much at home. Do you find now that you have your troubles getting bookings and all the BS that you go through, are you relying on photography as well in the background? Like I know I've been doing a lot of light painting, a lot of stuff I can do around the house, um, taking pictures of birds in the backyard. Are you using photography as well to help you with those issues? Or are you just using the photography now when you have to so that you can keep the bills paid? I am a photographer throughout, and it literally is beside me at all times. Currently, right now, I am editing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It, uh, it, I go so out this all the time. It, it, I go out and shoot landscape. If I'm not shooting landscape, I'll bring my drone. I'll go to waterfall. I'll, I'll just do anything and everything. I, I love it. It's just I live, breathe, eat, shit it. Nice. <laughs> there should be a bumper yeah. sticker. Yeah. <laughs> I live, breathe, and eat shit photography. I love it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's good. You're coming, coming soon to the Encompass Photography website. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, These excellent. promo code expressions get 10% off your order. And <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We, we may have just got Brady in some trouble here. Uh, but, no uh, discounts. No discounts. You know, that's excellent. So, so as uh, as we're coming up to the uh, coming up on our hour, um, we'll start to wrap up the show a little bit. But uh, we've got a, a few more questions for you, uh, for you, Brandy. I know. Uh, also, you're also a musician. Um, so, what I uh, what my question is is, what is your jam? What is it you're listening to right now? That one song or that one band that that just does it for you and gets you moving. I listen to lots of metal, but not like 80s metal. I listen to lots of like brutal death core and like really, okay. really heavy, heavy stuff. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> like, like Whitechapel and um, like Job for a Cowboy and lots okay. of death core metal. Uh, let me, I'm just, I'll quickly yeah. pull up Spotify. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> I'll list a bunch of bands that are. I love this. He's giving me songs I've never heard. So when we do our reaction video. Yeah, exactly. Psychotic, all the, like all the songs Knot. that people use for their jam. Oh, I love Slipknot. Corey Taylor's uh, just awesome. Yeah. Winds of Plague, Within Ruins, just anything metal, fast, brutal, just love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, yeah. Something to get awesome. the adrenaline going. Yeah. I, that's what I used to play. So it's just ever since. Awesome. What that's do you awesome. play? I was going to ask. It's one of my questions. Usually, when I've uh, met other photographers, there's usually an instrument in their past as well. Like, yes. w what is it you play? I've played guitar since I was about 13, and I'm also a death metal vocalist. I don't do it anymore, but that's what I used to do. Hmm. Awesome. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the pig squeals <laughs> and all the deep stuff. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Perfect. And then uh, next question is uh, often on a photography podcast, people, uh, we talk about what's in our gear bag and we're not specifically talking about what gear we're using, um, but to be creative and to get out there and create what you do, what is that one item that you always have with you or one, uh, one thing that you always have with you to be creative? Mm, that's a good one to think about. I'd have to say the one thing that I love bringing out and creating with, I'd have to go with like a crystal or my phone because I love using the reflection of my phone. Okay. Yep. Very good. So I just, whatever's on hand, but yeah, I'll go with those. Okay, I'm going to start perfect. bringing that crystal around with me when I shoot because I've never actually thought of using, I, I bought the crystal to do light painting with, to try and get light refracting through it through a light painting yes. photo. And um, which is pretty cool, but I've never really thought about using it the way you do. I love that idea. Excellent. Story. Try it out. It's fun. I will. Thank you. Yeah. And I love the idea of using the phone as well. I've actually been on shoots where photographers have had small mirrors that they've used, um, yeah. but I suppose you've always got your phone with you. So that's great. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then lastly, at the end of every episode, we like our, uh, our guests to give our viewers a challenge, our viewers and listeners a challenge. Um, so did you, did you have a chance to, to think of a challenge uh, that you wanted to, uh, to put out to our listeners and viewers? Yeah, I think I remember what I wrote down. I was like, I just want to challenge people to know deep down from the core of who I am. This is coming from a punk kid that literally everybody told 
that nothing was like this would be possible that literally I created a business from literally going to Best Buy and picking up a camera for 600 bucks and turning a hobby into a full-time career and I want people to understand that literally anything is possible if you put your mind to it and literally all you have to do is just like that's as much as I can say anything is humanly possible and for a fun challenge I want people to go out and as they can see from some of my photos is embrace the sun and not see it as this challenge which lots of photographers have struggled with finding is like embrace it don't turn your back to it turn in towards it and see what you can create i'm so glad he did not challenge us to stand on the side of a mountain <laughs> I quit. I'm, I'm. <laughs> but no those are those are awesome those are honestly awesome um i especially i especially love the fact that uh you had said like you know challenge yourself to to just go after what you want don't let people tell you that you can't achieve things don't let don't listen to that cliched nonsense that you hear over and over and over again because yep. at the end of the day no one's stopping you nobody's stopping you but you yep yeah it's 100 percent true I yep. love it. Excellent. That's great. That's great. And before we end up, we've got a, a couple of charities we like to talk about. Um, so for myself, I work for Shoppers Drug Mart and we do uh, the run for women every year. And because of COVID, that run for women is uh, it's a virtual run this year. So it runs from uh, July 4th to the 11th in many cities across the country. Uh, but it, since it is virtual, you can sign up from anywhere and, and uh, do that. So here in Thunder Bay, many of the stores took up the challenge. I think we've got about 50 people in the district that are, are doing the virtual uh, walk. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we've been uh, practicing out at Boulevard Park, uh, Boulevard Lake Park here in Thunder Bay um, to do the walk around that. So we're doing a 5k walk some point in that week. Uh, and all of the monies raised from uh, the virtual walk for the run for women uh, goes towards uh, local women's health, uh, women's mental health charities. So um, so talking about depression, we're definitely uh, uh, doing something to help those, uh, those local women and the local charities uh, throughout Canada. So a uh, great cause. And uh, Aurora, you have nice. a cause that's very near and dear to your heart as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, both me and Brian work at Henry's. Um, and just over a year ago, we started a charity um, through, well, Henry started a charity um, based on putting mental health into focus. Um, it's called the Henry's Foundation. All the donations we take go directly to Kids Help Phone, Jack.org, KMH, and other Canadian mental health institutions. It's very localized. So like, uh, if you donate here in like, the Ontario area, uh, part of the donation goes to the national charities, which is uh, Kids Help Phone and Jack.org. But another part of it goes to the local charity. So in our area, it's Cam H. Um, but if you donate in uh, Vancouver, part of the donation actually goes to VGUBC Hospital um, in Vancouver. So there's uh, quite a, a range uh, covering all across Canada where Ever our stores are, you can donate online or at any Henry store. Um, I personally, it's it's been near and dear to me because I personally have struggled with mental health, with anxiety and, and depression. And I also have a close sibling who um, actually has recently uh, opened out on uh, opened up on social media and talked about their struggle with bipolar. Um, and um, you know, uh, they themselves have benefited actually from CAMH. Um, and it's uh, it's one of those things that's really near and dear to me. Um, and I know it's near and dear to Brian as well because he's been a big um what's it called opponent uh, yeah supporter supporter Supporter. of it as well like you've been uh, involved in other mental health charities and 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 causes as well and uh when i brought it to retail (laughs) i worked retail and i have to deal with all the covid it's back in the day (laughs) i've I've latched right onto the whole mental health thing no even before then you're right i mean Mental health is something that we've all had to deal with. Um, Randy, you've talked about it. Ryan, I mean, you've had your own bouts, and we've all had our own issues, and that's a big reason why we started this podcast, so we can all individually deal with a lot of the stressors and frustrations. I've gotten over so many things just doing the seven now seven episodes that we've done. Um, I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about my family. Brandy, you said your family was a big influence. Your mother, um, my mother was a huge influence for me as well. She's a barbershop singer she's very dramatic and charismatic and you know that that definitely brought me into playing music and then 
you know, be creative in some way. So I'm, I'm really happy that you have your family that brought you into it and encourages you. I think uh, one of my favorite things that I'm talking to customers in my store is when you have a, a father and a son or a mother and a daughter, whomever, parents and their kids, and the parents are encouraging their kid to get into photography. Because as I always say, once you get your kids into photography, they'll never have money for drugs. <laughs> so, you know, it's always a good thing to get into. But yeah, I mean, mental health is real and we've all dealt with it in our own way. And I appreciate you being here, talking about your story, sharing your photos with us, getting to meet you. Uh, you're a phenomenal photographer. I'm really happy to know you. And uh, Mark, thank you for introducing us. Appreciate that. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Excellent. And um, Ryan, did you want to talk about your... Um... Yeah, real quick. Yeah. I, I always yeah. like to throw it at the end of each episode that if you're somebody struggling with addiction, as somebody who, uh, who's who been through it, it's it's always a, it's a bitch, it's a pain in the ass, and it's not fun. But if you are sitting at home right now and you're going through addiction, you're going through a time in your life, similar to myself, similar to what Brandy was kind of describing earlier, where you're at home, you're bored, you're doing things for the sake of doing them. There's always a better way. You can always reach out if you feel that's a point in your life that you're at. Uh, you can never force it. You can never expect it to happen overnight. But if you're feeling like you're going through that kind of that thing, always reach out to somebody. You can send me a message. You can send your family a message. There's somebody out there that's willing to help you out and somebody will always help you. So uh, for me, it's just if you're struggling through addiction, please reach out. Please look for help. And uh, I, I hope that things work out for you. Excellent. OK, can so I give I was... one quick update. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Just a quick update. Um, we had Holden Albright on our show a little while ago, and mm -hmm. he pledged to donate up to $300 to match our viewers' pledges. And we got $150 in pledges, so he's donated his $150. We raised $300 for the Henry Foundation. I'm super stoked about that. I know we talked about it last week, but I'm still excited. I think it's fantastic. That's awesome. That, awesome. that we're doing good for the world. So that's yeah. great. Awesome. Yeah. The little, the little awesome. podcast that could. <laughs> yeah, that's right exactly and brandy thank you so much for coming on this week man this was uh it was really awesome to have again a bunch of photographers gang up on me but in all seriousness uh hearing your story was was a lot of fun man and uh, i really hope that that things kind of turn around for you at least for your business because i know with covid right now things are tough so before we do let you go where can people keep up with you where can people find some prints from you what, what can people do to kind of help you out right now all I would ask is everybody check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and my website at Encompass Photography and stop by and just enjoy my work. And if something you like it, send me a message. Want to book something? Send me a message. I'm here to help. That's awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Excellent. And then, Brian, do you have anything else that you'd like to cover off before we go? No, I think this has no, been a fun yeah. show. I appreciate it. Awesome. Definitely. It's been a great show. Great show. Uh, Aurora? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm happy to have uh, Brandy on. I was really uh, excited looking at all the pictures and hear, hearing some new techniques that I haven't tried myself. Um, so I want to actually try some of those myself. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, Perfect. actually, through, through part of the show when we were talking about the lens flares, my wife was sitting just over here and she was watching them. And I've got, she's scribbling notes here. We have to try that. So, <laughs> so you've, inspired, you've inspired another person you didn't even know you inspired. Perfect. So that's <laughs> what it's supposed to be. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Well, anyways, thank you very much for everyone for joining us here on episode seven of Expressions of the Podcast. Uh, have an absolutely fantastic week and uh, we'll see you next Monday. Take care now. Bye, guys. Ooh. Ooh.